Libra singles, welcome. Super singles, completely singles, absolutely single Librans. This is uh, your singles reading for the first half of December. I call this Meet the Soulmate. And it works, uh, by the way, using the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck, because uh, we've cleared the field and we've cleared the runways. Maybe the right one for us been circling around, never could quite slide in there between the other ones or whatever else we had in our minds. But now I think this is looking at someone's in a position of being wide open. And I'm asking simply here for the universe to tell us, for spirit to tell us who's the right one for you, Libra. So it's positive reading, always positive, really. And I've pre-shuffled here. So I'm going to pull eight cards. I'm going to have the star. This is in what I call the emotional position and the high priestess. Okay. Um, let me just stop right there. That kind of got my attention. This is a little bit amazing. So the emotional position. Here we're going to see the intellectual with two cards. Here I look at what I call the uh, relationship love and the sexual nature and the core values and lifestyle. And these are like the four pillars of a solid person, solid relationship. So here I see the moon. They definitely got Aquarius moon. Um, and with this high priestess energy here. I'm thinking it could even be in the 11th house, the moon. You know, an Aquarius moon. Meaning they'd be in Aries rising. Kind of where I was going with that. And someone that operates off of their instincts, like their moon um, is very strong for them. And that means, I mean, their emotions, uh, they're, they're really for them, it's not really about emotions, it's the intuition, the gut, you know. Um, and with the manifestation card over the high priestess, you just kind of have to look at them together. And this is, I tend to see this kind of as natal energy where I'm looking at this kind of at a chart too when I see this. And, you know, this is someone that was born um, with a, a lot of uh, intuitive understanding of things. Um, the star here, I mean, I've been seeing this more and more. So I'm thinking your person's, you know, at least an adult, okay? Um, but still, I think, okay, but well, we're not here at this moment in time for no reason, right? I mean, this is a crazy time to be alive, huh? Yeah, Earl Grey tea, okay? I just salute these days, you know, and every minute's a miracle. And I don't know where it's going, but it, you got to say, it's an amazing time to be alive. It's a ride. Uh, but I believe your person here, when they were younger, they're going to tell stories. I like to pick up on the stories they might tell. This has to do with their mother, has to do with their family life. I think they did have a very strong maternal figure for them. And in their chart, it'll be their, um, the moon uh, will be aspecting their Venus, if they're a woman, their Mars, if they're a male, some harmonious manner, sextile trine. Um, And, you know, so they're probably going to tell stories of like, or maybe their parents will tell and that when they were little, they had invisible friends like this and were talking to people um, and this kind of thing. But I get the feeling like they, it would be a miracle if I know many people like this have done a chart of any uh, um, healers, light workers, psychics. So... It's rare that the parents sort of understand, and it's also I see a really good childhood here, a really supportive childhood. I think with the star card, they had an, a, a parent that was um, maybe not Aquarian, but I wouldn't be surprised. Usually, with the, if you look at the family charts, you know, um, if they've got an aqua moon and the parent's going to have an aqua sun, aqua rising, something, you know. Um, so often and so they're kind of open-minded and forward thinking um and so when this child your soulmate here a libra comes to them time after time hey mom hey dad you know and probably you know who knows i can't say I see it happening but 
you know, maybe lightly, maybe more with more concern. I, I feel though that I do feel the parents get involved and um, support the child. And your person may have memory, adult memory of this, which also is rare. I got the and let's see. I'm just gonna really show up here in the intellectual position, guys. Um, Queen of Wands. Here I pick up the sun. This is the intellectual position. That part of us that uh, wants to be what it wants to be. And the Two of Wands. I think we got Leo here because I like having this fixed energy for your person. So um, strong Leo too. Um, and <clears throat> Moon in Aquarius. And leo sun and you could have the situation here of a opposite a moon and op opposite sun so i'm trying to put a picture together of the natal chart too so you'll know i want you to know this person this is predictive they're probably not in your life they're coming coming first half of december is what i'm asking in the name of light and love so that serves the greatest good i think we're looking at a leo you see the lion-headed throne here Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot Deck. And someone that's, uh, they're naturally very composed, very self-confident. You also see the cat. Um, maybe you like a cat, you know, how about an aqua moon? One thing about it, they're not easily overwhelmed. It's not water, as a <laughs> astrologer's note. Uh, it's fixed air. Um, so if anything, they would be the one that's always going to be stoic inside and solid. Um, Come crisis management, you know, that's what you want. <laughs> Somebody that's not going to be devastated, and, you know, they can uh, function. Um, and with this Leo, um, sun, opposite moon, there's a lot of things that come with that. I think the child meant a lot to both their parents. But the parents had a little bit different idea. Basic, the son is your basic idea. So, so the father more, the moon, the mother. So you literally could have had a situation with the father had a dominant uh, Leo energies and a mother who had dominant Aquarian energies. So in their own uh, synastry of the mother and father, there would have been these oppositions that it's not then a surprise that it shows up in the daughter or son that they both find so important and they both know that this child is special so they this uh, this is their story they're gonna say yeah my parents always knew I was special so I can't even say what they might have done um, but your person knows how to handle this energy I can tell you that you know from an early age and they're sitting with it I think you pretty much see this queen this is how they might sit this looking at you um, you know, Leo's a, uh, is a fire sign, I'm a Sag. Leo's the most grounded fire sign, because at least it's fixed fire. The energy's kind of moving around in a circle, right? Um, and self-contained. And with the two of wands, it wouldn't be unusual to have a Leo Mercury as well going with that. It wouldn't be unusual for it to be conjunct. Um, The two of wands. Yeah. Hmm. It's the energy of deciding. It's also in the unconscious. They're kind of healing that this person would do because I think that's what we're talking about. See, uh, you know, uh, God help me. I've done a lot of reads, like it's starting to approach the same amount of uh, 900 and some. Uh, subscriber so uh, help me out <laughs> subscribe what a keep ahead of that you know but I haven't seen that many of these is a light worker this is a healer uh, you know, energy worker but I think it's projective ma masculine energy so not necessarily someone that specialized be like a medium or a psychic uh, but someone that would be a healer that would use Reiki could do distance healing in some uh, fashion here and let me look now at their um, Venus energy mostly what I see here King of Wands 
Okay, I don't know how to see this except for they've got uh, Venus of uh, Leo. <laughs> you know, that's really how it would work out. It can only be one thing or another. And if it's going to be fire, it's going to be a Leo Venus. So you might have, now think about this, a Leo Sun and Venus opposite their natal moon. This is what you're looking for. I'm thinking within a 10 degree orb on that moon and sun opposition, right? Uh, Venus, you want to see that closer, like six degrees, but I bet it's there. I bet it's there. You know what, to me, if it's in Leo, it, it, with the sun in Leo, eh, it's going to be a lot. It's like a conjunction, you know, even if it's not in orb. just depends. If they're out of orb and they're making significantly different a uh, um, aspects to significant energy, well, that's what changes everything. Um, so... Um, this person could, if it was a male, you could have a protector male energy about them. Uh, same thing for a female, you know, the, the mother bear, you know, don't mess with the mother bear guys. So let's see what we get for their Mars energy. Okay. Uh, five of wands. Interesting. <laughs> fifth house guys we got a loaded leo here i don't really redundant but i think you've got a sun a venus and a mars and they're all going to be conjunct in leo i mean i have four plants of sagittarius jupiter sun jupiter mercury and mars you know and they're uh five degrees to par ten degrees apart um but it's like just come on you know it's all working very much as a lot of the same energy uh, aspects just tell you how so it's tweaked a little differently sometimes they're really good you don't have all uh, you don't have the whole uh, stellium just working to one purpose it's spread out enough where you know say here uh, Mars uh, makes some kind of aspect that maybe uh, the Sun didn't make being a little further away but still because they're in a stellium it's all this connected energy this Leo energy that wants to work towards the same purpose so and when you have your Venus and your Mars in the same planet uh, what you want, what you desire, your de desired nature, Venus, uh, becomes the same as uh, what you want to, as going and getting it, you know. Um, you would feel very much a sense of, it could it be like, you know, uh, for manifestation, it'd be like, you know, I, uh, give me that universe. You look at it that way. Um, it could be a little bit like that, even in relationship energy. I told you it's your person. This is the one that's right for you, Spirit saying. I didn't say they're perfect here, but damn, they have a lot of power. Uh -huh. It's a good thing they're high functioning. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's just no getting out of this. If you don't like this, then there's a problem. Um, because they're dominant in bed and they're dominant in love. The way that they're going to act, like I often end up saying, well, you're surprised when the bedroom doors closes. You're not really surprised that they're a lion in the sack, or a lioness, you know? It's married to a Leo, God bless. Um, so, um, you know, just because you're a spiritual person doesn't mean you're not a passionate person. I think this is a passionate person. Um, this is, could seriously, what I'm, I'm really, these next two cards will maybe say more about the, what the lifestyle and core values, maybe what they do. Um, but, you know, this is a life coach, a, a charismatic leader um, of people, um, something like this. Um, let's see, we've got the Four of Pentacles. We've got the Eight of Pentacles. So this is very interesting, Lifestyle and Core Values. I see this again as a self-made man or self-made woman. Um, this person felt so strong, um, they always went their own way. The star in the high priestess is amazing. This person is, I mean, no one's alike, right? We're all special, but this person's special, special. I mean, you don't meet people like this every day. And here, you know, uh, that's what I see with this. Um, um, the, uh, again, I talked about the energy being contained with the uh, fixed fire and just swirling around here. This is the energy being contained, someone that's self-contained. 
and down here in the core of the reading, they come in here with the manifestation card, and they go out here with one of the most positive and underrated cards in the deck, the Eight of Pentacles, the Good Workers card, and that's that personal energy. You know, it, other than as we start with the Star and the High Priestess, we don't see any other major arcana here, and so this is really showing a, a life, what someone's done with their life, and they're, they're not that old, 30s, 40s, guessing, um, in their 50s, I don't know, but it's like the middle. They're in the middle. And everything they've got, it, I wouldn't even say they've gotten it the hard way. They've gotten it their way. They've earned it. Um, they've rolled up their sleeves and earned what they have, you know. Um, and they're a little bit conservative. You know, I don't know about their politics, but in terms of their lifestyle, core values, a little conservative. Uh, be that way around the house, you know. They'll be more comfortable with the house. It's not too lavish um, and, and something like that. They'll be. This will be the person that'll be like, honey, you know, the house is almost paid off. If we borrowed against it at the bank and got a big loan, uh, we could redo and I could have my HGTV house. And this kind of person might say, but honey, do we really need an HGTV house? Because it's perfectly fine and it's paid for, you know. So, you know, I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing. I'm saying it's your person. But you got to understand, every dime this person's ever got went through their own fingers, right? They earned every penny, every penny they got. So, wow, thank you, uh, Libras. And uh, if you could think of anywhere, please, to share this, any uh, social site, please do help me out. Uh, tell friend, tell friend. If you haven't subscribed, I appreciate it if you do, and hit the bell. Thank you, guys.